Uh, welcome back, brush monkeys. Um, I want to take a few moments here and talk about airbrushes because airbrushes are one of those kind of game-changing things for me. Um, when I stopped painting miniatures for a while, uh, I, the big thing was ink washes and dry brushing. Uh, just that's how just about everything was painted. And then when I came back, airbrushes were the huge thing, and it was it was really a game-changing thing for me to to see such smooth base coats, so smooth transitions, and between colors and smooth, um, just everything. Just it, it was really a revolution in uh, in miniature painting, and uh, I was really kind of intimidated by airbrushing for a long time because it seemed like really complicated. Um, my view of airbrushing was still, you know, the late 70s, early 80s, uh, uh, van art of dragons and wizards and things like that, uh, uh, and really kind of a specialized art form, and so I was kind of intimidated by airbrushes, but they really don't need to be intimidating. Um, they're actually easier to learn than I thought they w would be, and, uh, and so I wanted to kind of share a little bit about airbrushes and about getting into getting into them and getting started on them and uh, a lot of people think first of all that airbrushes have to be really god awful expensive and they don't what I've got here is a selection of, of relatively cheap airbrushes this was probably the most expensive one out of the three that I I have here this was the Citadel uh, spray gun and you can see it's it's modeled kind of like a, a miniature hair flamer it's a bottom fed external mix airbrush which means the air gets plugged in here air goes, is plugged in here when you pull the trigger the air travels this way and the force of the air coming out of it draws the paint up from this jar up through here into this and then it mixes you can kind of see the end of the nozzle here this is where the paint comes out and the air comes out right behind it so that air being forced out of it creates a vortex that draws the paint out and it mixes basically outside the airbrush to, to uh, propel the paint. Um, this was probably I think 60 bucks when it was new and uh, it was great for doing large armies. You could fill this up with paint. Um, the jar is a great little tool. It shows you how much paint versus how much thinner you need or water in this case and you can just spray an entire army with it really quick you can just get a lot of stuff base coated primer really easily um, so this was actually my first airbrush per se um, from there I moved on to bigger and better airbrushes this is a uh, central pneumatic airbrush that you could buy at Harbor Freight um, it's again bottom feed airbrush. It is functionally the same as the Citadel airbrush. The air comes in the bottom here. It's got a single action trigger. You just push the trigger down and the air comes out. The air creates a vortex that draws the paint up, in this case out of the cup, or you can take the cup off and put a jar on like like this other one. I like to use a little cup for it because it, I don't use it as often. And the, the paint's drawn up the same way with the air blown out, external mix. It's essentially the exact same thing. The difference is the central pneumatic airbrush is maybe 10 bucks at Harbor Freight <laughs> versus the 60 bucks at Games Workshop one. And this is a great, again, great way to get started airbrushing. You get used to the feel of the airbrush, the, the shape of it in your hand, the control of it. Um, it's single action, which means you push the trigger down, you get paint in there at the same time. It's not very complicated at all. Uh, the next step up from this one is this airbrush, which is also central pneumatic. Um, this one looks a little more complicated. It's really not. It's what's called a double action airbrush, which means you push it down, you get air, you pull back, you get paint. Okay, but it's bottom feed, same as the other one. Um, same as as this one and this one. It's just the difference being you push down, the air comes out, and then you pull back, and you can pull 
back a little bit and get a little bit of air. You can pull back a lot and get a lot of air, or a lot of paint. Paint's drawn up. It, uh, it's internal mix, which means if you can see the little nozzle in there, that's the nozzle that the needle sits in. And so when you pull it, pull it back, you can kind of see the needle moving in there. That will determine how much paint is coming out. And you can see the needle move in the back there too. This one has a little stop gap here. If you know you're going to be needing the same size line every time, you can screw that in. You can dial that in. That will set that trigger back to draw the same amount of paint every time. Then all you got to do is push it down for the air. And you get a nice even line every time. Or you can, and you can dial it in pretty, pretty far if you want a pretty heavy line like that. Or you can have it out all the way and have a really thin line or no line. So that's a little double action airbrush. And that's, again, this is Central Nomadic to be bought at um, Harbor Freight, and this is uh, about $20 or so uh, for, for this airbrush setup. And it comes with, I think it comes with a cup, it comes with a, a jar, a um, couple of mixing bottles for mixing paint in. They both do. Um, and that's it. It's, again, it's nothing to be really intimidated by. Going up from those, I got, and this is basically just a, this is the case that I keep my, my good airbrushes in, my workhorses in. Um, it's from Leading Edge Games, and it's basically just a miniature paint. It's just a miniature case. It's a transport case for miniatures. It's foam lined. And this is the one that I keep my Badgers in. Uh, Badger makes some really, really nice airbrushes. You can see this one's kind of got paint on it. It needs to be cleaned up a little bit. Um, but this is my this is my workhorse. This is my Badger Patriot Arrow, and this is maybe a hundred and twenty dollars through Badger. But it's it's a really really great airbrush. And again, it's this one's top feed, which means it's got this little cup on the top. You put the paint in. You can see the needle in there. You can see it move when you move the trigger. Again, it's double action like the second Central Nomadic. Push it down for air, back for paint. And you can see the needle move back here. Fantastic, fantastic airbrush. And you can get a pretty fine line out of this. It's not, again, I use it mostly for um, priming, the Zenithal priming, the base coats. Um, my Zenithal priming video, I use this one for that whole thing. Um, the other badger I have here, and again, it's kind of needs to be cleaned up, but this is my Sotar 2020. And this thing is fantastic. I got this because it does really, really fine lines. See the needle in there. Um, again, it's double action. Its action is almost the exact same as the Badger. It's got a little cup for air. You can even see the size of the air cups are about the same. The size of the airbrush is about the same. The difference is inside here, and I'm not going to take it out because I tend to lose this piece a lot. Let's see if I can open it up and let me show you is this little part right here that the needle is poking out of that is actually a medium point nozzle uh, the fine point nozzle got lost on it I'm actually waiting for a new part to come in the mail um, and when it does I'm going to upgrade both of these with some new new stuff I'll do that in a future video um, in the meantime you can kind of dial that back and pull the needle back so it doesn't get damaged. But essentially, the, the operation of this is exactly the same as, as the Badger and the other central pneumatic. You're down for air, back for paint. And this one has got a little dial on the back that dials in. You can see where it comes in contact with the little nut that holds the needle in place. And that limits how far back you can pull the trigger. Like right now, it's in all the way. You can't pull the trigger back at all. Dial it back a little bit. Pull the trigger back just a little bit. And the further you dial it back, the further you can... This gives you a lot of really fine control. Like you could dial it down to one right there and get a really, really fine line control. And that lets you do things like the trim on cloaks or really fine line uh, dragon scales. 
it this is this is the brush to get for miniature painters really but it takes a lot of a lot of maintenance a lot of control um, a lot of the paints really have to be thinned down a lot especially with the fine point tip in there to make it through there like a lot of even the, the badger miniature paints have to be really really thinned down to uh, to make that work but it's a fantastic airbrush and of course it comes with this little plastic cup that keeps the keeps the tip safe but that's really all there is to airbrushes there's a lot of different brands out there these these are kind of mid-range um, these are all like the low end the badgers are the mid-range kind of thing um, some of the Awada airbrushes are kind of mid-range and then you can go all the way up to like harder and Steenbeck brushes which are German engineered and are, are just it sort of think about it like like driving a race car these are your entry-level um, compact used compact cars you know this is your sedans or minivans <laughs> these are your, your mid-range family cars this is the the minivan that I drive now um, harder and Steenbeck airbrush is like a Ferrari <laughs> or a Lexus or something high-end like that um, and you certainly don't need something like that unless you're a professional uh, painter uh, personally I think you probably don't even need it then and you can get started pretty easily I mean most of these airbrushes can be found at um, Badger airbrushes can be found online or you can find them at Michaels um, the Central Nomadic ones like I said you can find at Harbor Freight the um, Iwadas are sold at Hobby Lobby and they have a lot of good paints and, and accessories and things like that to go to go with them you can usually get a decent compressor at, at the Hobby Lobby uh, to go with those um, the other thing I would recommend getting is uh, this these are actually two things and I recommend getting them both this is a moisture trap and this is the other thing I strongly recommend everybody get and this is actually two things hooked up here is a water trap and this is a quick release um, the water trap first of all uh, when you're running a compressor and you have this hose attached to it to run the air to your airbrush some people attach the water trap onto the compressor end of it I think that's a mistake because the compressor will build up heat and so the air coming out of it is fairly warm when it's first coming out of the the compressor it's going to be warm air when it travels all the way down the, the hose and gets to the airbrush end of it it's had time to cool down and that's where you get the condensation that's where you get water in your line and that can mess up your paint and mess up your paint job and so I strongly recommend getting a moisture trap and uh, all this does is it, it just like it says traps the moisture in here lets the air go through and then you can push in this little button here on the side that opens a valve while the compressor is not on blows that extra moisture out of there the other thing I found is incredibly handy is this little um, quick release here uh, this is a badger quick release and as you can see I've got different sized nozzles on all these different airbrushes um, this quick release allows you to make that essentially a universal connection so now I can take this airbrush snap it on there and I've got the hose attached to it it's ready to go okay now if I was doing a lot of different painting all at once and you see this with like professional airbrushers they'll have several airbrushes all lined up uh, with different paints in their jars and they'll just switch from airbrush to airbrush now that one's ready to go pop that off put the next one on and that's really all there is to it you push it in there this little sleeve slides up and down that's a locking sleeve some of them will go in there and just snap in some of them you have to pull the sleeve back to get it to go in and it's all ready to go the great thing about the the combination of the air trap and the uh, or the moisture trap and the quick disconnect is like for me I've got fairly big hands and so running this little airbrush is kind of thin and it's kind of like using a pencil and there's not a whole lot to grab hold of there when you add on the moisture trap and the quick disconnect now I've got a little bit more to wrap my fingers around I got 
something more to hold on to. It's a little more stable while I'm airbrushing, and I can hold on to that and, and really get a nice clean line out of what I'm doing. Um, and like I said, putting this on all the airbrushes makes it really easy to switch out. If I'm doing a lot of painting in a I don't have a whole lot of time and I'm trying to get, get a lot of stuff done, I can just put different colors in different airbrushes and get a lot of stuff done really quickly just switch in between them as I go. So I strongly recommend both of those things and you can get them for both um, Iwatas and Badgers. Um, whichever one you get, remember which one you get because Iwata, if you look at these two airbrushes, this size nozzle is what Badger usually carries. It's a fairly small one, it's like one eighth inch, something like that. The Iwata airbrushes go with this larger size nozzle and it's uh, I think a quarter inch like that. So make sure you get a quick disconnect that matches the nozzle on the, the air connection on your airbrush. Um, in this case I sometimes you have to go with you can go with Badger quick disconnects. Uh, this one is a Badger to a water quick disconnect uh, adapter. So it'll, it'll fit in the Badger quick disconnect, but it fits onto the Badger connector. And that's really all there is to that. Um, like I said, not a whole lot of gear to get started. You're going to want to get um, some cleaning supplies to uh, a couple of microfiber cloths. I use a uh, vibratory, um, I'm drawing a blank on it now. <laughs> it's an ultrasonic cleaner that I got at Harbor Freight. Um, I think I got it for Christmas, but it only runs like less than a hundred bucks. And you fill it up with a mixture of water, airbrush cleaner, and Windex. And that will clean your airbrush just fine. Um, speaking of that mixture, get yourself a squeeze bottle like this. Um, it's just, you squeeze it and the, water, and the stuff shoots out there. This will hold a lot of cleaner in it. Um, it's pretty pretty good size. This came with an airbrush cleaning kit in it. And you just dump all the tools and stuff out, and then you can use the bottle for the cleaning. Um, this it, it's kind of hard to see on on this bottle now because it's kind of worn out. I've had this for a while now, but this formula was given to me by a very good friend of mine, Howard Ar Ar Arkelson of the um, Mocan Miniature Painters Group. And if you can see the notches on here, you fill it up to about here with Windex, up to about here with airbrush cleaner, and then the rest of the way up with water. Mix it up really good. This cleans your airbrush without being too abrasive to it. Um, things like the, the Windex and water are fairly cheap. The airbrush cleaner could be kind of expensive. So this lets your airbrush cleaner go a little bit further, especially if you get one of the big bottles of uh, the Createx cleaner. And uh, I keep that on hand when I'm cleaning the airbrushes. Three or four cap loads of that into any one of these airbrushes. Just fill it up a little bit, shoot it through, and then fill it up again, shoot it through, fill it up again until you're just getting the clear blue fluid. And then you can switch into, to the next color. Um, for a more in-depth clean, when I'm done painting for the day, I use uh, a little dropper like this of just isopropyl alcohol. Um, again, just fill a cup up with that, shoot it through, and then you're probably good enough to go ahead and put that away. About once a week or once a month or so, if I've done a lot of airbrushing, I'll do a complete deep clean on them where I'll take the airbrush completely apart, put it in the ultrasonic cleaner, and uh, and uh, really do a deep, deep clean on it. I will cover that in a future video because that's where the airbrushing can get a little intimidating. There's a lot of small parts in here. There's a lot of little things that'll come out and come loose. There's a lot of parts that'll, that you can take apart. Um, there's a lot of things in there that you can't take apart that can get really seriously damaged if you do the wrong thing. So I will uh, discuss all that on a future video. Right now, just know that it's not not really that intimidating to get started in this stuff and it doesn't have to be that expensive either 
Um, like I said, the, the central pneumatic airbrushes like this you can pick up at Harbor Freight for $20 for this one, about $10 for this one. Uh, you can pick up a decent compressor there for around $30 or $40, maybe less. I didn't buy my compressor there. I bought mine at, mine's a Badger compressor, and I bought it when I bought the, the Badger airbrush. You can also buy um, a little airbrush stand that looks like this, and you've got pieces here to hold the airbrushes in that way, or you've got a rack up top that you can put them in, and that'll hold up the four airbrushes. Uh, I usually keep the air tube stuck into one of those just to keep it handy up here on top of the workbench where I can get at it. Um, it really doesn't need to be too expensive to get into. I think I started, got everything I needed to start airbrushing for probably less than a hundred bucks. And like I said, I started out with this thing, and um, it connected with a little thin black hose to uh, a, a can of compressed air. And you get maybe an hour of, of decent spraying out of that before you ran out of air and had to go buy another $15 can. So very quickly I came to the conclusion that it was probably best to just go ahead and get a compressor, get a hose, get stuff that's going to last and and you'll be able to work with for a long time. But this this little thing did its job and I keep it around for nostalgia's sake. If I'm doing a large model like a Land Raider or a Rhino or I'm doing like an entire squad of Space Marines all at once, then I'll still, you know, put the paint in this thing and do the whole squad all at once or do the entire surface of the thing all at once, but it's got to be a pretty big deal before I mess with this. Um, so yeah, that, that's really all there is to know about airbrushing. The, the thing I think most people get hung up on with airbrushes is that there is no tactile response between airbrushes and the medium, um, unlike most other art forms. And, and by tactile response, I mean, if you're painting with a brush, you're painting with a brush, and you've got your figure here, your brush is touching the paint, and it's touching the figure. And it's putting that paint on the figure, and you can feel where that's going. You can see where that's going. And you have a lot of control about that because the tool is touching the medium, okay? With airbrushes, they don't. And so it can take some practice to get a feel for how much air you're, how much to push in to get air, how much to pull back to get paint, um, how wide a line you're putting on it, how thin the paint has to be. Um, there's a lot, a lot of variables to that. To that end, what I recommend, and I'm I'm trying to see if I can find it now. I recommend getting some cheap airbrush paint at, at Hobby Lobby. Don't go with the Badger Minotaur stuff that you're going to use on your figures. It's like five, six bucks a bottle. That's ridiculous. Get some like Spectratex or Createx airbrush paint that's already thinned down to airbrush quality. That's only like a two, three dollars a bottle. Get a bottle of that stuff. Get a, one of those big pads of drawing paper. And just spend some time playing with it. Just plug in your airbrush. Fill up the cup. And just practice doing thin lines, thick lines. Doing fades from thin to thick. Um, and just play with it. Just get a feel for how it, how it can work. Um, the other thing you can do... And, and uh, I saw somebody try this one time and I thought it was really a clever idea is there's a product called Zen board and what it is is a water reactive board that you paint on with a brush and the idea is you paint on it with water you just dip the paint tip the brush in water draw on the board whatever you want to draw and as the water fades it dries off um, and it's supposed to be like a meditation on impermanence and that kind of thing um, it's fantastic for practicing Japanese calligraphy and that kind of thing. But the part where it really I thought was clever was they used it to practice their airbrush. Every time they get a new airbrush, 
they just fill the cup up with water, blow it at this Zen board, thin lines, thick lines, hashtags, fades, whatever they want to do, and the, and the board just kind of naturally fades as the water dries. They're not spending a lot of money on artist paper, they're not spending a lot of money on paint, and they can practice with their airbrush as much as they want, because it's just water on a water reactive board. So uh, if you can afford one of the Zen boards, I would definitely go get one of those. They're fantastic for that kind of thing. But um, yeah, this whole thing was about airbrushes being intimidating, and they really are not. They're really not something to be intimidated by at all. Go get some artist paper. Go get some cheap paint. Go get one of the cheap uh, Harbor Freight airbrushes and just play with it. Just see what can be done with it and see what you can do with it and, and how to handle it and practice on the miniatures. Uh, practice on some cheap miniatures. Get some Reaper Bones figures like these guys are only like two or three bucks each. Get a bunch of those guys and practice on them. Practice getting uh, decent Zenithal priming like I covered in my last video. Practice uh, getting decent base coats on them. And uh, when you feel like you're ready to upgrade when when you've outgrown when your skills have outgrown what your brush can do then you can move up to the pash brushes or the iwatas or the the badger brushes um eventually you outgrow those and move up to high-end harder and steam back brushes you know, you'd be surprised what you can accomplish so um definitely give our brushes a try and uh I will see you next video. If you liked what you saw, uh, hit like and subscribe down below. Um, give me a comment about uh, what you liked about this video, what you didn't like about it, what you want to see in a future video. And uh, I will see you next time, Brush Monkeys. Thanks a lot. Bye. Hey, everybody. Tom from uh, Flying Monkey Studios here. Thanks for watching my videos. Uh, if you liked what you saw, Hit the like button if you want to be notified when new videos come out. Click subscribe. And in the meantime, if you want to uh, support me in any way, check out my Patreon site, Facebook page, and Instagram page. And uh, comment below on what you want to see on future videos. Thanks a lot. See you later.